Hello, I'm Pastor Hank, and I hope you've got a few minutes today to listen and uh, let us share some things with you. Uh, you know, I want you to know today that God loves you. Uh, you're, you're very, very special to Him, and, and we have a, a, a special program today. Uh, we have with us Carolyn from Life Choices, and uh, we're going we're gonna to share some things that I, I believe will be beneficial to you. Uh, I think uh, if you're not uh, directly affected by by what we talk about, I think you'll be seeing people every day that are. And uh, so uh, we uh, we're glad you're here. And if you've got a few minutes, just just relax a little bit and and enjoy the program. Uh, Carolyn, we're we're so happy to have you here today. Uh, Carolyn is the executive director of Life Choices, and uh, uh, it's uh, it's such an honor for you to be with us and so glad that you've taken the time to to share some things on your heart and some some things that God have you before we get started why don't why don't you just uh, share a little bit about yourself well I'd be glad to and the honor is mine so thank you Pastor Hank for um, just wanting to welcome um, welcome us and welcome the topic that we're going to discuss today so uh, I am Carolyn I am a registered nurse and I love the opportunity that I have to share the compassion of Christ with anyone who walks into any of our three clinics or even into our mobile unit. That's great. That's great. How long uh, How long have you been with Life Choices? Well, interestingly enough, I served in health care in Africa for 20 years and wow. then moved back to this community and was invited to put in an application and to see whether or not Life Choices was a fit, and so I've been there going on now 13 years, and wow. I love it. Uh, I just, uh, I don't know, I get a little bothered by uh, every time I hear any messages or anything going out about this. It's always a, a condemning thing, and, uh, you know, I, I just would say to you that uh, it really doesn't matter what, uh, what situation you find yourself in today. Uh, God's not condemning you. And uh, that's what uh, blesses me so much about you and your staff. Uh, Y'all just are so compassionate, and so you you don't condemn anybody. You you just try to help. And uh, I think sometimes we, as uh, pastors and ministers and churches, uh, uh, we're more interested in just telling you what the problem is instead of the solution. But anyway, so I I thank you for for wanting to be part of the solution. And. Uh, uh, I don't know, Karen, why don't, uh, why don't you just tell us, you know, I, we, we hear about pro-life movements <coughs> and we hear about life choices and, and, and the slant that the news media usually puts on it is just a negative, you know, people have in their minds a concept of somebody picketing in front of an abortion clinic and, uh, you know, that's not what life choices is all about and uh, I'd just like, if you would, just, just share your heart a little bit about what life choices is. So sure, I would love know. to. You know, I think um, it's been said that justice is not an issue that you talk about. Mm -hmm. It's a space that you choose to stand in. And I think that's what Life Choices does. We choose to stand in that space with compassion. Um, you know, I think we would all have to admit that in the world today, there is this... Um, wedge that is being driven between the church and culture and so there needs to be those people willing to be in that gospel gap mm -hmm. and to be gospel whisperers and to share hope and to speak life and to speak love and to do it with compassion you know we can all speak at someone but are we living life with them are we wow. going through you know is it a, a cycle where you know it's not just a bunch of words but um, we're there to make sure that people know it's not what we're against, it's what we're for. And that's choosing to be pro-people and to be pro-love and to abundantly realize that there is not a single one of us that hasn't made a mistake or hasn't made a wrong choice along the way. There are choices in our country. We may not agree with all of those choices, but we can be there to make sure that we're providing a safe place where a young man or a young woman can come in and know that they're going to get medically accurate information. It's going to be confidential. It's going to be compassionate and empowers them to be able to make a decision that is good for a long, healthy lifestyle. And I think that's where I love that we have a prevention 
department, we have an intervention, and we have an extension. And so it's not just about a one-and-done shot. Right. It's about loving people through that crisis from the beginning to the end, or if they don't even see it as a crisis, it's just an opportunity to not profit off of some issue in the middle of a crisis, but to walk them through with just non-condemnation, no judgment, mm -hmm. but just to share love. Well, you know, that's uh, that's really the way God is. We we have just uh, kind of portrayed him with a, in a different, remotely different way, but uh, I just am so uh, so touched. I mean, I know I've I've been I've been at your facility, and uh, you know, your you and your staff uh, uh, are just uh, so compassionate, and, and it just blesses me, uh, you know, to see. Uh, uh, you know, I think what what really people need to know, wh whether it's whether it's with abortion or or, or whatever crisis they have in their life. Uh, I think it's just important for people to know that somebody cares. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this issue does touch everyone. And, and you look even in the church demographic, you know, they would say that 75% of those that have had an abortion would say that they have some kind of a church affiliation, 37% being Protestant and 28% being Catholic. And so it, it is an issue that fills probably most every family. They say that one out of every two by the age of 45 who are women will have had an abortion. Right. So we know that it, it affects so many, but what is what is our response? And I think it is that gentle love, that gentle touch, and knowing that, like I said, anyone can make a mistake, and sometimes it's such a harshly, um, harshly approached issue so we drive it even deeper underground and someone who is hurting someone who's maybe had a reproductive loss they are afraid to come out and say man i just need someone to know i need someone to care and that's where you know at life choices it's not only what we're able to share on the front end but we're there for anyone who has made a decision and they need to know how to grieve or they need to know how to walk through that um, there are people that are experts in that area and will walk side by side and not shun and not shame. Just, I just got to thinking, it's almost like uh, that we, I'm going to just say churches, and I'm going to include <coughs> me in this, but it's almost like we, we, we force people to keep everything inside instead of being open because I don't want you to know that I did something so bad. and. Uh, you know, that's the exact opposite of what the gospel is. Uh, the gospel is to, you know, you're, let me just speak to somebody that's watching. Uh, you're faced with some choices now, and, and uh, you know, but you're afraid to tell anybody, and, and you're afraid to, to let it out, but, you know, you're not made to carry that load. Uh, Jesus said, cast your cares over on me, and, and I'll carry them, and uh, you're, you're, just not, you're just not equipped to carry that heavy load none of us are and and I would just like to say a real quick prayer here for for those that are watching and and maybe you're in this situation maybe you're at a point in your life where you need to make a choice uh, uh, I just like to pray for God's healing and God's touch to come to you so right where you are just let me pray for you for just a second father just you know every heart that's watching and and you know how messed up our lives can get and and, and all of us have been there. And uh, for this person now that's, that doesn't know where to turn, they, they, they don't know what to do, they, they don't know which direction to go, I just ask, Father, that you, that you touch their heart right now and that you use something that Carolyn or, or I say, that, that use something to help them, Holy Spirit, and show them that there is hope and that, that somebody does care and most of all that you care. So just just touch them right now, and we we thank you for that, and we and we pray that in your name, Jesus, because that's why you came. And, you know, Hank, uh, I would say along with with the prayer that you offered, just to know that you're not alone, and just a simple phone call to our helpline, four one seven six two three or six two four eighty thirty. So four one seven six two four. 
800-800-8030. We'll put you in touch with a person. Wow. Um, and we have that helpline 24 mm -hmm. hours a day. Mm -hmm. So anyone can call and just say, hey, I'm not sure what choice, I'm not sure what I should do. And let someone walk through that with you. Um, if that precipitates then you getting an appointment and coming in and exploring and getting some medical information to help you know where you can turn, yeah. we're there. We have three clinic locations. We have a mobile unit. Or you can always go to our choicesmedical.org website and find out more information and make an appointment. But any of those avenues that you know can really reach out to say we're here, we're right. here right now, and we care. You know, God's only a prayer away, but yeah. his people are also only a phone call away. Right. Well, we will be... Uh, We'll, we'll have the, the phone number and the website at the bottom of, of the broadcast and, uh, and want everybody, you feel free, uh, even if, you're, you need, uh, if you need something yourself or maybe you know somebody that does, uh, you feel free to, to contact. I, I just, uh, again, when, I, when I've been there and when I've heard different ones of, of uh, you or your staff, telling stories about, uh, and, and, and everything is confidential. Uh, mm -hmm. Nobody will know that you went unless you tell them, uh, right. you know, but uh, I just see the, you know, I, I've listened to you you uh, and, and some of your staff, but, but mainly you tell stories about lives that, that you were able to help and that God was able to use you to touch their life. And, and, uh, and I've just watched the tears come. And, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, pretty hard to, to see God move in somebody's life and touch their life and not to, and and not be moved, uh, uh, but anyway, I, I just I appreciate that. You mentioned uh, you you have three places. Where where are those? Are they we have a location in Carthage on okay. Fairlawn and our location downtown Joplin, um, and then we have a location near Southern, right next to Busano's Pizza. Mm -hmm. So those three locations, and then we also have a mobile unit. Mm -hmm. And I would say, you know, I am just one member. Yeah of a terrific team. Um, our RNs, uh, they are phenomenal. And our other staff members that welcome you in, that answer on the phone, volunteers. Um, we partner with 12 different physicians in our community that come in to do testing and also help with prenatal consultations. And, you know, we're very fortunate, too, to not be gender exclusive. We want to make sure that, you know, we're understanding that the dad's voice has a right to speak in too. And so we have two men full-time on staff that are able to reach out and visit with a young man so that it, it is an issue that affects the entire family. It takes two to, to bring that little one That's into good. being, and so we want both voices to have the opportunity. That's good. I was going to ask you about the... Uh, the Project Blueprint, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's an exciting. Sarah will write your notes down, <coughs> and then you no, don't know where you're you wrote good. it. No, you're uh, good. You're good. Project uh, Project Blueprint is something that has been uh, initiated at Life Choices just in the last couple years, and already just the phenomenal outpouring by having men on staff that mm -hmm. say to a young father who's coming in and trying to figure out what his role in this is, is to just help them be empowered mm -hmm. to find their voice. And to speak into that, because, you know, we know that when a young woman is facing this, she feels like it's her body, it's her choice. But a lot of times if that father of the baby was willing to speak into that, that makes all the difference. And it's amazing how many of our young men, they do care mm -hmm. about life and they care about the person that they've been with. So that's where, you know, the two guys that we have on staff, they are phenomenal. They, again, they have no judge. They have no agenda. Mm -hmm. They're simply being there to help empower and to find a voice. Right. So you, you're not just, it's not just ministering to the, to the, the mother, uh, but you're also reaching out to the other, other parts of the family and uh, the other people. And I don't know, sometimes we, we just, uh, we fail to, to remember and to think about all the lives that are touched. I'm just I'm just thankful that that this area that we have a group of people and uh, when I when I brag on on Carolyn she always goes to her staff I mean but that's the same way I do because if we didn't have good staffs we would we would look pretty uh, well anyway we we are thankful that we have good staffs but uh, uh, 
you know, just it's it's such a blessing to know that we have a group that are not just talking about the problem, but they're where the rubber meets the road, and you guys are are really uh, getting involved with with uh, people, and uh, you know, it isn't an eight to five job. I, I, I love one of the the. <coughs> advertisements if you will uh, one of the clips that I saw and it was about uh, you or you or one of the workers were leaving and then somebody came to the door and uh, you came back you know and you know that's what it's all about we aren't Jesus to others eight to five it's our entire life it's in you know when you answer that phone when you see that person at Walmart wherever the case may be we are the hands and feet of Christ and I think you know the gospel in its entirety is good news to people and it's not just right. limited to a certain segment or a certain hour it's it's that opportunity to share with them and to walk alongside in the fullness you know we're not called to make converts we're called to make disciples and disciples means that you walk alongside so it's not just at that initial oh my goodness this test is positive but it's through the ultrasound it's through prenatal it's through our parenting classes where you know we have classes that run six weeks and then cycle into advanced parenting classes we have an opportunity to meet the pediatrician and we have an area pediatrician that comes in and meets we have a crib side class that's for the dads so that dads can just get comfortable with holding this wow. you know there's no instruction manual that comes with uh, that yeah, little thing so sure. so it's not leaving someone at the point of crisis and just saying go and be done with it it's how do we walk alongside yeah. and how do we continue that relationship and we're just the bridge yeah. we're the bridge from wherever this is to making sure that they understand that there's a family there's a church family out there that is willing to welcome them in and to help them know how to for the rest of the life of you know their family how do we take that and get more input from a community and from a family and that's why i love that we are just the bridge between sure. culture and christ and getting people connected to that's good. to that's him good. And, uh, i just want to say again i just want to encourage uh, any of you that are facing this situation or in this involved in this situation in in any area uh, don't 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 be afraid to contact carolyn and her staff there don't don't be afraid to reach out uh, because there is somebody there that cares and 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 you know sometimes sometimes we I know that some listening sometimes people they're afraid to they're afraid to reach out or they're afraid to contact y'all because they think they're going to get preached at or they think they're going to you know and 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 you know maybe maybe you don't even know about this Jesus we're talking about or uh, you know we're we're not trying to put religion out here today and and they I promise you they they won't uh, tell you any of that unless you want to know it that's right <laughs> uh but but the the concern is for you uh, uh that somebody cares about you and they care about what you're going through and and they want to help and uh, of course we know Jesus is is the answer and if uh if you don't know Jesus before we leave here we'll we'll tell you how to know him but but you know this isn't a thing where uh, you guys try to cram religion down somebody's Absolutely throat. Not. No, this is a way where I heard uh, Billy Graham or somebody say if you uh, you ought to everybody ought to everybody ought to preach, everybody ought to preach. Their life ought to be a sermon, and uh, you know he said just tell tell everybody about the Lord that you see, and if you if you have to talk, yes. And uh, I'm I'm sure I messed that up, but. Uh, but you you know what I'm talking about, and and that's that's what these uh, people at Life Choices do. They're not uh, they're not y'all aren't do-gooders. Uh, you're not Bible thumpers. Uh, you you have a real relationship in your heart, and uh, and that relationship causes us to care about people. And uh, I appreciate that you mentioned the the clinics and stuff. This past week, uh, you guys had a ribbon cutting, a new addition to your family there. Josh, tell us yeah, about Josh too. a little bit here. Um, Josh is short for Joshua, and it just means the one who rescues. Mm -hmm. And literally, we realize that there are some people that just don't have transportation or don't have access to health care. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to be able to not limit the compassion 
of our services to a brick and mortar building, but to be able to take the Great Commission and put it into a go mission, put some wheels on it and get it out there into the community, get it out to places where there maybe are some that would like to have testing or need a pregnancy test or need an ultrasound, but they can't get to us. And so our mobile unit, obviously the capacity is not going to be great because it's one at a time, but it is a provision that's been provided by this community and is staffed with very, very uh, compassionate and very competent mm -hmm. medical staff that are well trained and they're able to go out and to be able to offer the same services that we offer internally we now can offer them externally as well so it's it's a super exciting opportunity so you know if you see our vehicle parked somewhere stop by and say hello you mentioned services uh, you know we've talked a lot about caring and about uh, trying to help uh, people emotionally when they're going through this and giving them information what what are you but you you guys actually do medical things you actually test and and share just real quick what those absolutely or some of them <coughs> we feel that anyone who has a sexual health concern needs a safe place to go to access medical care and so with our team of nurses and the partnering physicians that we have we're able to offer pregnancy tests ultrasounds uh, we're able to get people into that first prenatal consult and so we have area OBGYNs that partner with us and are able to see a young woman and help her know where to direct that care and then also we offer all STI testing so anyone that thinks they may have been exposed or maybe they're going through a situation where their partner has fallen prey to an affair or to a betrayal they can come in and make sure that they for their own health get the screening that they need so we do HIV testing we do all of the sexually transmitted testing we do HPV screening we just want to make sure there's a good place where you can go to get some good medical care for your health so it's um, you know it, it's just an opportunity to share love and that's what we do that's that's great uh, I just I just love the concept that that you all aren't afraid to address the issues and uh, you know so many times as, as churches as ministers we 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 think just throw a scripture at them or something you know but uh, but y'all are, are are really there and, and and if you if it's a service you don't provide I, I know you can refer. you can refer them and, <coughs> uh, and and get them where they need to be uh, I wanted to before we were done I, I wanted to uh, for those that would like to be involved and would like to help with life choices, what uh, what what could what could we do to to help you and be? You know, a there's a lot of things. We're always looking for volunteers that mm -hmm. want to be a voice for the voiceless, that want to come and just share what that option counseling would be. People that are there that would say, "Hey, can we clean your building? Can we sweep your sidewalks? You know, can we come in and help with an event? Um, can we volunteer in that way?" physicians, nurses, med techs, if there's someone that can give us a four hour shift in a week, that really will help us see that many more clients. Um, and then always just the prayer covering for our entire team. I mean, as you well know, um, being the shepherd for your flock, there's a lot of weightiness that pulls you down. So, you know, praying for our staff and you know, asking God to give us the stamina and the endurance. And then, you know, financial partnership. Labs don't come without a sure. price uh -huh. um, you know you you want to pay your <coughs> your medical team well and so you know just just wanting to make sure that we have the infrastructure to support medical clinics are not inexpensive so any of that partnering together um, just give us a call like I said you're, sure. you're welcome to contact me or you know contact you because yeah, you know let, all about let us so. know. we'll be happy to happy to share send you the right direction here uh, I'd, I'd just like to encourage uh, y'all know this that you you hit the financial part last and very briefly you know but uh, sometimes we try to avoid all that but you know I know we as a church we've been partners for a lot of years with y'all and uh, uh, you know I'd like <coughs> to just encourage if there's any pastors out there and and you're not or maybe uh, your church isn't and you could share that with your pastor uh, I just think that uh, monthly support is even no matter how small or, or how big it is is a help and and it uh, gives something that you know is coming in and uh, but uh, 
personally, us as a church, you know, I want my people to be involved in all these things, and, and this is services that we can't physically do, but we can help and enable you guys to do it. And uh, I just, uh, you know, sometimes we're so busy sending stuff to missionaries all over the world that we forget the the, min the ministries and the missions that we have right here at home. And well, and I, I mentioned earlier that I had been in Africa for 20 years, and I think that 20 years over there prepared me for the mission field we have in our very own backyard right. and the opportunity to serve. So I appreciate it. You know, Hank, it was 18 years ago that the people of this church came together and provided the very first ultrasound mm -hmm. for Life Choices and kind of got us on that plane. So mm -hmm. we're appreciative mm -hmm. that you are a people of action. I had uh, had forgotten about that, but our, our founder and, and pastor at that time uh, Dr. Mac Evans, he uh, he felt the Lord impressed him to yeah. get y'all an ultrasound, and he shared it with us. And and uh, hey, the the people just uh, uh, generously, yeah. without any any hesitation, you know. And and so so I just would encourage any individuals, any churches, uh, get involved. We have some people here that are really really caring, really concerned uh, about uh, about this area in our life and in our community and, and uh, just encourage you to get involved. And uh, Well, we're, we're out of time. I, I just asked you real quick, what would you say uh, to those maybe that are thinking about uh, having an, an abortion or they're at that place where they have to make a choice? And, uh, and I don't know, maybe, maybe real briefly, those that maybe have made a choice. And I, I would just say you're not alone. You're never alone. Um, you can look up and you can look out. And you've got people that are ready to respond. So don't don't crawl into a dark hole because of something you're contemplating or something that's happened. But know that there is full redeeming grace. And there is love. And there are plenty of people that have walked where you've walked um, and are not going to be there to condemn, but really to embrace and let you know we care. As we uh, end, why don't we pray? Uh, I think we just, I would like to pray for maybe those of you that uh, are faced with a choice right now. And, uh, and those of you that maybe that have made a choice, because uh, I believe uh, if you have and, and uh, you're under condemnation and the guilt of that, I, I believe uh, God loves you enough that he could take that guilt off of you. So uh, if you don't mind, we'll just pray here as we, as we end. Father. Thank you, Lord, for Carolyn and, and all the staff at Life Choices. And just thank you, Lord, that you're providing an answer in our area. Lord, we're grateful to you. And, and I know there's somebody that's watching this that they're at a point in their life where they have to make choices. And Holy Spirit, I just ask that uh, you take something we said and use that as an encouragement and help them make the right choice. And uh, we're, we're so grateful to you for your leading, Holy Spirit. And you know, Lord, I, I would just hold this one up before you that that has made that choice, and and uh, the the guilt uh, is there, and the the pressure, and the condemnation, and, and Lord, I just would ask that you'd just touch their hearts with your love, and and let them know that it's okay, that you love them anyway, and help them move on with their life. And we're so thankful to you, Lord. And if there's somebody there watching this, and you don't know that Jesus is the Lord of your life. If you just right now ask him into your heart, and, and I'll say a prayer, and you just say it with me. And uh, if you'll ask him, he'll come in, and, and uh, he'll do something inside of you that no one else can do. So if you don't know for sure if you're saved right now, pray this with me. Father, I want to be saved. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. You died for my sin. I ask you to forgive me. I want to live my life for you, and I need your help. And so thank you. Thank you for saving me right now. And I pray it in your name, Jesus. Amen. Carolyn was so happy that you came, and uh, I just uh, can't quit uh, praising you all enough for all that you do. And, and uh, I just, uh, just want you to know we love you, and, uh, and I, I hope, uh, hope we've said something that, that helps somebody. So anyway, thank you for you and your staff and, and all that you do, and, and we're blessed to have you all in our community.
Hey, thank you for joining us. And uh, if you need any of this information, give us a call and we'll be happy to get it to you. Hey, I want you to know that I love you. But more important than that, I want you to know that God loves you.